one. Um, so I got a request to make an awareness ribbon type of um, boondoggle keychain, and I've actually made them before, um, but I've given them away, so I don't really have any to show you that are completed. Um, but what you want to do is you want to do the square stitch, which I will, um, you know, put a little, like, box thing. Why can I not do that ever? I'm really bad at that. Um, put a little box, like, right here, and I will link it down below. Um, to my square video and you can either flip the square like you would do if you're making um, the bracelet which I will also link down below um, which will kind of look like that in the beginning or you can leave it in its classic um, look which is you know it's like cross loop so either or is fine um, if you're gonna make it into a keychain with like the ring on that part you might want to do that if not um, you could do it this way either way it works fine um, this was just something I've had pre-made for a while and I didn't really know what to do with so anyways let me get started um, you want to make about seven inches of boondoggle square um, you know like the square thing you don't have to do it all one color I um, I was trying to like do a project thing and I was making like individual circles, um, square things that were all one color, so that's why I have it like this. Um, but anyways, once you get this much, you want to kind of like fold it into like a bend, kind of like you would see, um, you know, and you want it like to start to look almost like it would look, um, like if it were an actual ribbon. And you want to take two strands, um, you know, and hold them separate, like this. And then you want to put the project in between those two strands, like the sets, so that you have two on each side. Okay? And then what you want to do, which this step is a little tricky, and I probably should have had this already ready to go. You want to do the stitch over the boondoggle. So, kind of look underneath to see which strand does what. Um, you can you can start it like this if you'd like, but then you make sure you you want to keep this in between the stitch. I don't even think you just saw that. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time just to make sure you saw it. Um, and if you did see it, then you're just gonna have to see it again. It's quite all right with me, and I'm sure it is with you. So just put it between. You know, you want two on each side of it, and then start. To do the stitch. So you just want to make sure that these two um, that are going you know, over, cross over the boondoggle. Um, the ones on the side don't necessarily have to, but there should be at least two that cross over. Um, there sh actually should only be two that cross over. And then don't like fully tighten it yet. Um, you know, just kind of like maneuver this whole thing around and then start to tighten it. But the problem is, is that sometimes, um, as you're tightening it, like, the stitch will move to the side of it because you pulled it too tight one way, like that. And you don't really want that, um, so it's a little tricky to do. You might want to hold your finger in there and, um, you know, pull it tight as you're doing it. You can even get a friend to help you. Which might help. Okay, so I got it tight on the thing. And I use my mouse, which I don't necessarily recommend doing. But um, then you just want to do your second stitch to lock it into place. And um, just remember that second stitches always lock everything into place. So if you're ever, you know, putting a bead in or something, you want to really lock something into place, two stitches will lock it. See? And now it's locked right there. This will slide a little bit so you can, you know, redo it if you'd like. Um, I don't recommend making it too much, too wide like that because then you'll have more. I don't recommend, yeah, sorry, I don't know. I don't recommend moving it out too much like that because then you'll have more of a fish. So about there will give you a nice ribbon. And then you just want to keep doing the square stitch. Um, and eventually it'll be long enough. And I recommend burning the ends. Um, not tying them off like you would normally tie off the square stitch just because you want everything to kind of look like it belongs together. Um, that seems kind of weird to say, but 
I don't know. I've always, I always mop the ends of my boondoggle projects just because my older sisters always had it done by my dad, and I liked the way that looked because I never used to flip my stitch either. Like this, like flip method, I never ever did that. Um, and I like to see the stitch. I just, I always found it hard to do. Um, but. The Boondoggle Man, who actually has his own YouTube channel, and he was my camp counselor for many, many years, and he, I think, may have been one of the people to actually get me into Boondoggle. He, um, he actually does flip his stitches, and that's where I kind of first got the idea, because he was like, well, why wouldn't you do that? And he doesn't like to burn them because kids chew on them, and he doesn't like to glue them because kids chew on them, so he ties his off. I was never a fan of tying them off. Um, I mean, they do stay pretty tight um, when you tie them off, if you tighten it tight enough. But I, I don't, I just never liked it. I was, I'm weird, I guess. Um, it's, it's like one of those things that once you get used to one thing, you want to stick with that one thing and never really go back to something new. Okay, so, you know, I, you can see I have a little bit done. Um, so it's almost done. And you can, if you're, if you see this here, see how they're starting to separate. Um, you can use a push pin, um, which is one I just used the other day, and you can pull up a stitch or so, so that you can, you know, at the top of the circle, um, you want to pull one up at the top, just so that it, you can get a loop through it. You just kind of want to wiggle it in there and then stick a strand of boondoggle through there after you get, you know, loosen it up a bit and start pulling on that so that you can get um, a loop to form and then you can put a key ring through there. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this up really, really fast. Um, this is also how you would make a fish project. Um, and I think I might end it as a fish because I want to show you how you melt the ends together. And that is a little more tricky. Okay, let me just grab last stitch. I don't recommend using your teeth. I always do. Maybe that's why I have a gap. I don't know. Okay, so get it, get them really, really tight. And then snip the ends as close as you can. This one's coming out. What the? F okay. Then you want to just snip the ends really close to the base of the project. This works better with manicure scissors or with um, a little pocket knife. I don't have one of those with me. My manicure scissors are like all the way over there and it was just a hassle to get to. So yeah. Okay. Then you want to take a lighter. Um, I recommend using one that doesn't, you don't have to kind of flip with your thumb, the like that spin kind, just because that's like, it's not that it's hard to do. Um, it's just easier to, you know, kind of do this and you can get your hands out of the way. So, you just want to light your lighter and then you want to, you know, gently run your... Sometimes that'll happen. Um, you can fold the project back into itself if you want or you're just going to have to snip the ends one more time. And they're, they're all flying all over the place. The other day I cut these by my computer and I got them stuck under my keyboard and like some of my keys weren't working. And I couldn't figure out why, but then, like, I lifted one up and it figured it out. Okay, so again, here we go. Light your lighter and start to melt it. You don't want to light this on fire. And also, as always, be careful around fire. If you're a child, um, I really don't recommend you doing this on your own. Maybe come show your mom or dad this tutorial and um, they can figure out how to do it and they can melt them for you. Um, and also be careful because the boondoggle will get kind of hot. I've never burned myself doing this yet. Um, but there's always a first time for everything. You know, just kind of push it together. Get everything to stick nice and tight. Stop doing that. It keeps coming out. This is old. This thing is like five years, four years old. And you don't want to light this on fire either. Just 
Okay, I overmelted this. Um, <laughs> mine is now like blackened because I like overdone it, overdid it. But at least now I know it's not gonna come out. It is a little hot to the touch. Um, just be careful. If you have calloused parts of your body, maybe you should push it against that. My calluses are all right here from field hockey. Um, so yeah. If I push it back, it's a fish. And if I push it that way and this was longer, it would be an awareness ribbon. So there you go. That's how you make this simple little project. Mine is going to be a fish. It's a pink piranha. Um, okay, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, please let me know, and I will do my best to help you. Bye, guys.